Good morning. So we are still here in Suptar on the island of Broch. And we just had a great breakfast downstairs. And now I'm just waiting for Melissa to get ready. Pack up the room here and we're gonna get on the ferry. So if you guys haven't been to Broch Island here in Croatia, definitely must visit. And we are staying at the Osam Hotel in Subtar. It's literally right next to the ferry. Osam? Melissa says it's Osam. Osam! That's what I said, Osam. Now I've said this hotel's name like five times now. So Osam, fantastic place. It's an adult only resort. They have two pools. So there's this pool right there. And then there's also another like private pool on the top. Yesterday watching sunset from the rooftop patio. Amazing sunset overlooking the ferry and the whole harbor. Fantastic location. All right, it is now time to leave. So we're taking this golf cart to go get a cart because obviously this hotel is like in the middle of town and there's really very limited parking. There's only eight spots at the hotel, but they do have their sister hotel. Picked up the car and now we're here in line. I thought we were gonna be first in line, but there's this car in front of us. But yeah, it's a good tip is to, you know, if you're waiting for the ferry, especially during high season and normal times, obviously during this time that we're traveling during COVID and everything, it's less, le you know, a lot less tourists. So it's not a huge deal, but in normal times, we suggest you would put your uh, car in the ferry line because it could get full. Uh, sometimes people have, we've read stories and blogs and stuff where people have missed their ferry because it was too full and you couldn't get on. You can make a reservation online and pay, but that doesn't guarantee you a spot on the ferry. So you still have, I don't really quite understand the reservation system yeah. if it doesn't guarantee like, you a spot. So you still have to get here early. Um, during high season, I recommend right after the previous ferry leaves, put your car in line. So about an hour and a half before your ferry departs, go ahead and put your car in line, go back and like finish getting ready or, or walk around town or, or grab have lunch food or, whatever. or something. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited to check out this ferry because there's a top deck that's open air so we can actually sit out there and watch our approach into the harbor. 108 in Kuda. So this is more than. Yeah, a little bit more because we pay 169 for the other ones. But usually the ferry terminal is like next to the main part of town. So there's no issue putting your car in line and then just being able to go walk around like the main part of town. So that's what we're about to do. Now on the ferry, really, really nice actually. There's shade on the very top of the ferry and then these seats up here. It's kind of like a cruise ship almost. What's interesting is the first ferry we got on, there were a lot of people staying in their cars, but we're now noticing that there are signs that say access to the garage is forbidden during navigation. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if everyone's supposed to get out of the car. Or... That's what it seems like. 50 minutes to split. So yeah, it should be a nice, easy. Today's really calm, so yeah, it should be really, not uh, windy, really it's nice. Clear, so I think I can actually oh, see split. Yeah. Okay. Um, this ferry is the first one that we've encountered that has free Wi-Fi. So that's cool. Melissa and I have made it into Split, but we are on another golf cart today because we are staying inside the Patient Palace, which is a pedestrian only area. So we were told to park in a garage just outside the main center. And now we're being driven to reception. Does it get busy at night, this area? Mm, yeah, but not as usual. Oh. So we are staying in Villa Split and it's called the Heritage Hotel because this building dates back to the 1300s. 13th century. 13th century, 13th century. so 1200 something. Yeah. But those, the ceilings right here, that is the original wood, wood ceiling. ceiling. That's this crazy. building used to be a mini palace, mm -hmm. and so it's a protected site. And, By UNESCO. Uh, there are stone walls right outside the room that are original, and the ceiling is original. So we are in one of two rooms that has original wood ceilings. Um, we got upgraded because 
there aren't that many people staying here due to, you know, COVID and travel restrictions. And um, I think that's pretty much been the case everywhere we've gotten upgraded. But this room is very nice. It's nice and large. Our bathroom is large. Um, we have AC. The two employees that we've encountered that have helped us so far are, are so, so nice good. and so helpful because we couldn't park by the hotel. We had to park at a hotel. They met us there with a golf cart, brought all of our bags here, um, carried our bags up the stairs, and then Yvonne... And it's because this is a heritage hotel, so they can't have an elevator. So Ivana showed us different places on the map, and we asked her about food recommendations and pretty much all of the places she recommended. I had already noted um, as part of my research, but one place that I did not read about is a gelato place called Emiliano. We heard about Luca. Luca supposedly has the best gelato, but that's where she recommends. So we'll see. I, I love the location of our hotel. It's in Diocletian's Palace. It's close to everything. Um, it's just steps from where we want to go to lunch. The guy that was helping us with our luggage um, told us that tourism right now is at 5% of where it's normally at. The restaurant that we wanted to go to for a late lunch is called Villa Spiza. Unfortunately, it is closed just for today. We found the location of it just closed today, but we did find the ice cream place. So we'll come back and get some ice cream, but now we're gonna go and try a Croatian dish called, what is it called again? Chivaki. Chivaki. It's um, this particular place, I think, it's a mix of beef and pork. Mm. And I think you put it in like, I don't know, the picture I saw was in a pita. I don't so know if it's It might be kind of like a, a kebab looking thing. Uh, maybe. It's kind of it's kind of hard to navigate in this uh, old area of Split. You can tell that Split is empty because we're literally on the most popular street of kind of the old town of Split. And this has all the shops on either side of it and Literally, it is There's empty. Nobody. It's and it's, it's a empty. Sunday, so it Crazy. should be full. Yeah, because there's no cruise ships. Usually, cruise ships are docked. There's probably like four or five cruise ships just docked on any given day, but Zero. none Zero of that right today. now. So. This is called a chapati in bread. So the chapati is the the sausage, or kind of it's like a meat roll kind of thing. So this has a special sauce, onions, and cheese. And so it's like a, yeah, it's like a sandwich, but all right, let's try it. Wow, you're a very aggressive eater. Mm. It's good. That's good. Well, the bread is good. <laughs> it's really soft. I have to be aggressive so I can get some of the meat. That's good. There are four entrances to Diocletian's Palace, and this is one of them. I don't know if this is the main one or not. I'll have to look on a map. It's not. Oh. Okay. The main one's like north. Oh, okay. So let's go. During peak tour season, um, can you guys imagine how packed the square would be? I can see like, and tour groups here. Yeah. Flags and like lines to get in. It's crazy. But apparently the best view of Split um, is from up there, 360 views. It's um, too hot right now and the sun is too high in the sky. So we usually t like to take pictures um, after like five, before nine, after five. This is pretty impressive though. So it's a Roman emperor that built this palace. I'm not sure exactly what this section of the palace is, but like what Melissa was saying, I mean, literally, I'm in this thing by myself. There's no one, but going like peak times, or normal times, I mean, this place would have been mocked. 
you would you wouldn't. There, there's no be way able you could be here by yourself. Yeah. And you can't take any photos just by yourself. It's it's kind of crazy. But yeah, really thankful that we are able to travel at least to Croatia. modern reference and that's why it's very famous now is because this was used as the filming location uh, for Daenerys' dragons in the Game of Thrones. So when she was in Marin, this is where the dragons were. If, um, if you remember the, the scene where they, she goes down into the dungeons where the, the area where they kept the dragons. <laughs> This apparently was used to film that. Um, I don't know exactly this section or where the, the underground um, staircase was, but uh, we're gonna walk around. But this place is really cool. And since it's really hot outside, we decided to come here in and it's, it's great. Diocletian's palace is actually older than I thought it was. I thought it was built in like the 13th century, but apparently the Roman emperor was here in the 7th century AD. So all of this was from the 7th century AD, which is really impressive that all of this, this stru these structures are still standing today. Construction of the palace took place between 295 to 305 AD. There's a north quarter and a south quarter. The north quarters were for the military and the servants, and the southern part was for the emperor's residential and religious purposes. I don't know which side we're on. I think we're on the south, southern part. The basement halls in the southern part of the palace reveal the original floor plan and layout of the emperor's residential quarters. So the basement is the only surviving area of the palace. Everything above the basement, basically it was repurposed, so. So this is the north end. Okay, this is just the north end. It is 6 p.m. and we're walking to a spot to catch sunset, but um, there are, well for one, it's cooled down significantly. Yeah, it's really it's nice It's actually now. really pleasant yeah. and there are a lot more people out now. Um, well, I guess today is Sunday, so maybe Sunday traditionally in Europe is, it's a religious a day, right, obviously, and, and I think Europeans take it a little bit more seriously about like it being a day of rest. Yeah, well, yeah and a family day and everything's the difference in temperature from earlier today to now like the sun is low it's about seven like it's so much more lively now like it was depressing earlier <laughs> most of the shops are closed on sundays there were a few restaurants and bars open but a majority of them were closed and so not much was going on but it's starting to come alive so i'm excited to see what happens when it gets dark? We're now on the Viva, which is like the promenade, riverfront, I guess, oceanfront uh, street here. But the big tip is you should never eat at any of the restaurants along this like very touristy because they're, they're just all tourist traps. Portions are small, prices are high. So always try to go away from the main hub of any city, uh, particularly a like, very touristy city. But what we're, we're doing now is we're going to head back behind Melissa and we're going to go on top of a little hill um, so we can get some good views over Split for Sunset. One of our bloggers that we follow 
says that the best view is not at the top and that this is the best view because the top view at the top is obstructed by trees. So we've stopped here. It was like a seven minute walk from the bottom. So really easy. And then it, there's actually like a restaurant right there where I think you can get some drinks and food. So we're just gonna hang out here for about 30 minutes until the sun sets. But it is gorgeous right now. The one thing that Melissa wanted to see in Split or the super yachts because we watch oh, Below Deck. It's like my favorite. She watches that show religiously, show. actually. Yeah. It used to be Keeping Up the Kardashians, but we're gonna have to find a new show now. It's ending. Yeah. <laughs> but Below Deck, it's just really fascinating. But yeah. But anyway, it's we see a couple of yachts, but they're not super yachts. They're smaller yachts. I mean, I was driving in. I was like, those are actually pretty big. And I was like, no, those aren't big. They're not the Below Deck big. They're not. Maybe we'll see them the rest of this week. Yeah, we're we'll here be for here like six days. So. Six nights, yeah. but we're taking day trips yeah. um, around. We're just spacing ourselves here so that we don't have to move around. But I think we're going to end the video here um, because it's about to be sunset. And so we're just going to hang out for a little bit, wait for sunset, and then head down for dinner. And then tomorrow, not sure exactly what we're going to get up to. We'll figure that out. But if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do so now and hit that like button. Let's get it on.